You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. A Las Vegas landmark is in financial trouble. Binion's Horseshoe, the classic downtown casino, had to shut down some of its games overnight. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Here's the Horseshoe's problem. All casinos in Nevada must have cash on hand to cover any big wins. Gamblers must be paid. Money's been a problem for months at the Horseshoe. Now it looks like it's becoming a crisis. Channel 8 Eyewitness News anchor Lisa Johnson explains. 30 years I've been playing here, and uh, I'm, I've never seen this happen. I mean, it's never happened before, but... Longtime Binion poker players like Cleve Haley are shocked that the Horseshoe Club was forced to close nearly half of its games. But these hardcore players still believe in Lady Luck. Absolutely not. Becky Binion is not broke. The majority owner of the Horseshoe Club, Becky Binion, may have money, but her family's casino is having money problems. The Gaming Control Board shut down 40% of the casino's slots and table games. Gaming Control Board Chairman Dennis Nylander tells Eyewitness News, Nevada state law requires casinos have a minimum bankroll on hand to pay out winners. The minimum is calculated on a casino's number of games. What happened over at Binion's is that uh, the, they fell below the minimum bankroll. And one of the options in that case is to for the licensee to reduce the number of devices they have. Nylander says at this time, Binion's has the required bankroll to operate at 60% capacity, but a big payout or cash shortfall could shut the casino down completely. Meantime, employees are concerned. Worried about layoffs? Oh, yeah. Today's supposedly my last day. When did they tell you that? Today. Horseshoe Club Vice President Lynn Saladino says the bankroll problem was caused by a temporary shortfall in the casino cage after cashing payroll checks. She called the problem embarrassing. Meantime, longtime customers hope Benny Binion's Horseshoe Club will stay open. Some even suggested the city help keep it open as a historical property. Mr. Binion started this when there was no Fremont Street experience, and sometimes I think that you have to give considerations to, to some heritage. Meanwhile, the Binion heritage, majority owner Becky Binion and her brother Jack Binion, who owns 1% of their father's property, are wearing poker faces and not commenting on the Horseshoe's future. Lisa Johnson, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The Gaming Control Board says it will continue to monitor Binion's financial situation. A shutdown of Binion's could cause problems for Mayor Oscar Goodman's downtown revitalization plans. You'll hear from him about that tonight on Eyewitness News at 11. Binion's Horseshoe is one of the oldest casinos here in Las Vegas. Here's a look at the history of that property. In 1951, legendary gambler Benny Binion bought the El Dorado Club and renamed it Binion's Horseshoe. It was one of the first downtown clubs to have carpeted floors. In 1970, Binion's hosted the first World Series of Poker. In 1988, the property expanded, taking over the mint that was next door. Benny Binion passed away on Christmas Day in 1989. His family has been running the resort since then. More news from downtown. Las Vegas City Councilman Michael McDonald said today that he has received political threats. McDonald is the chairman of the Housing Authority Board, which has been investigating a public relations contract awarded to County Commissioner Dario Herrera. And Herrera is a candidate for Congress. George Knapp of the I-Team is here with the story. George. Paul and Gary, anyone with a television has probably seen the political ads bashing Dario Herrera concerning the Housing Authority contract. The Herrera camp thinks it's less than coincidental that a story would surface one month before the election about alleged threats. However, Councilman Mike McDonald, who says he's a longtime friend of Herrera's, says he's received not one but two threats about a housing authority investigation. Is this, this thing starting to take on a life of its own? That's putting it mildly. Controversy over a housing authority PR contract has raged for nine months now, ever since it was alleged that Nothing late that's housing that's director that's Fred Brown seemingly jumped through I mean, hoops to give work to County Commissioner Dario Herrera. The contract has become a major issue in the congressional contest between Democrat Herrera and Republican John Porter. Border At the behest of Councilman McDonald, right. the housing authority has been looking uh, into how the work was given to Herrera. A report on that probe surfaced a few days ago and found that Director Brown probably violated policies by giving Herrera the PR work. It also notes that Herrera did nothing illegal. This past weekend, McDonald alleged that some employees of the Housing Authority who knew about the contract have been threatened. 
Now he says he's also Some getting threats. One, an anonymous cell phone call. Another, during a face-to-face -face with big money political types, whom he declined to name, but who reportedly promised to fight his re-election. Well, pretty much they say, either you get out of this and back away from this investigation, or we're going to get flat-footed in the middle of your race. And after a few heated exchange awards, I said, well, you know what, no one's married to this job. Go get your candidate, I'll pay his entry fee. McDonald, a Republican, says he stayed out of the race between fellow Republican John Porter and Herrera, whom he called his friend. He was careful to say that no threats have come from either Herrera or his campaign, and he denied that the timing of this matter had anything to do with politics. This is about employees that are being threatened. This is not a political issue. This board will never be used as a political issue, and I will not be used as a political issue. And have come to find out that the employees that have been calling in and were interviewing made this a political issue, we will then take the corrective actions against them as well. We spoke with Commissioner Herrera about an hour ago. He reiterated that he did nothing wrong in accepting work from the Housing Authority and says when he found out that the director had violated policies in awarding the PR contract, he immediately resigned. Herrera supporters say they seriously question the timing of the story and think it's blatantly political. Do we have any idea where other members of the Housing Board stand on all this? Uh, Herrera campaign sent us a statement from a board member, Chris Hoy, who is also a Metro Police Lieutenant. He says flatly Herrera did nothing wrong and that the attacks are political. Another board member, Bob Forbes, said much the same thing. McDonald points out that Herrera's campaign solicited those statements from board members while the investigation was still underway. Any word on who's behind these charges? Uh, the only Threats? hint he would give is that they are big money people who have given, uh, uh, Councilman McDonald says they've given him money as well as Herrera money over the years. He hints that if things get sticky enough, he might end up releasing the names. We'll see. Huh. Thanks, George. Sure, sure. Las Vegas gambler and businessman Billy Walters has been cleared of money laundering charges. The charges yeah, date back more than well, four years. No a district judge says really since the Nevada the Supreme charges, Court dismissed two previous indictments against Walters, this one could not stand. Walters' attorney says the ruling is good news, but the case isn't over yet. No word yet on whether the state will appeal this ruling. A one-year-old girl is dead and her twin brother in fair condition in the hospital and her parents have been charged with murder. Henderson police have arrested 20-year-old Sophia Mendoza and her 21-year-old boyfriend, Damone Tisdale, in what they're calling one of the worst cases of child neglect they have ever seen. Eyewitness News is live. Cindy Caesar joins us from Henderson. Cindy. Well, that's right. The little boy has actually been upgraded to stable condition when, after he was brought here in critical condition last night to Sunrise Hospital. Police say that the family's home was in disarray with not enough food or bedding for the children. And neighbors say that they often saw the little children left unattended. Well, to let your kids play in the street without clothes on is pretty bad, so. But. My daughter, she's kind of skinny herself, but I really couldn't tell you if the kids were malnourished because... Casey Sadler noticed her neighbor's five children were often left unattended, but she says she couldn't be a judge on whether they were being fed properly. However, Henderson police say that the two one-year-old twins were so neglected that one of them died and the other was hospitalized for dehydration. But 20-year-old Sophia Mendoza and her 21-year-old boyfriend, Damone Tisdale, no prior child abuse records. In fact, the sergeant on scene last night, an investigator checked that out and uh, tried to verify to make sure if, if, if uh, protective services have been out and they have not been out to this residence before. But Tisdale did have a prior record of three robbery charges and animal control had been called to the house several times for a malnourished dog. But no one noticed that the couple's children were in danger to the point of death. Now, besides the two one-year-old twins, Mendoza and Tisdale also had a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and a five-month baby. All of those children are now in protective custody. And once the little boy is released here from the hospital, he will also be given to child protective custody as well. Cindy Caesar, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. It's awful. Thank you, Cindy. Sad story. Fighting violence against women and children will be the focus of the annual Take Back the Night rally tonight at UNLV. A protest march will start at 6 p.m. It should have started already. The march will start at the Academic Mall on UNLV campus. A candlelight vigil will follow at 645. There will also be a rededication of the Southern Nevada Domestic Violence Task Force Victims Memorial. 
The names of the domestic violence murder victims over the last year will be recognized. Unusually cold, wet weather rolled into our valley and stuck around through today. It was kind of nice, though. Kevin Jennison <laughs> joins us with our first look at the weather. Kevin? It's not, it can't always be sunny in 120, that's for oh, sure. Like it. <laughs> it, is a, yeah, it is a nice change, and it's not going to stick around too long, but it may for some nice sights across the valley and points in, of interest in southern Nevada. Here's a view out from Red Rock earlier today as some of the showers were falling nearby, and of course some great clouds, low-hanging clouds, over some of those fine red rocks. One of the most picturesque sights in all of southern Nevada is when those clouds are touching the rocks and when they get that dusting of snow on them as well. And some of the higher elevations did get that dusting of snow with this cold air. Let me show you the Doppler radar imagery. And there are a couple of showers sliding down the east side of the Las Vegas Valley. Real-time neighborhood weather will go back to Red Rock where the temperature is 51. No wind, 73% humidity. And near Charleston and Torrey Pines, it's 57 degrees. And the wind is calm there as well. 57? Wow. Back with how long these cool temperatures will stick around and your full forecast in just a few minutes, Gary and Paula. A ring selling fake Viagra has a Las Vegas connection. Stories straight ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News. And coming up in medical breakthroughs, see the new technique doctors are using to detect breast cancer. And later in this hour, the latest on Steve Wynn's dream for a new strip casino. We'll show you where the LaRev project stands now. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6 with Paula Francis, Gary Waddell, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. Seven people have been arrested in a multi-million dollar counterfeit drug ring bust in New York. The drug? Fake Viagra. One of the suspects is accused of using a Las Vegas address to sell the counterfeit Viagra. Colleen May joins us now with the story. Colleen. Well, Paul and Gary, investigators say the suspect used a Las Vegas address to take in the fake Viagra from overseas and then sell it on the black market. Now, this is no small operation. Viagra is a widely used drug, and investigators say this ring may have imported millions of the look-alike pills. It's a prescription drug used by millions of men, and now Viagra is also the most widely counterfeited drug in the world. If taken uh, by the wrong patient, it could kill them. After a 17-month investigation, New York authorities busted a counterfeit Viagra ring with Las Vegas ties. Among those arrested, Baron Isbell, who is accused of using the address of this Las Vegas apartment complex for her business, BI Import Export Brokers. The manager here tells us that no one by the name of Baron Isbell lives here. And she says because of confidentiality reasons, she can't confirm whether Isbell ever took up residence here. It's good uh, counterfeiting. You know? Investigators say Isbell was arrested after promising to supply undercover agents with hundreds of thousands of cases of the pill. The other drug broker arrested, Denver resident David Rayner. Investigators say he used teddy bears and stereo speakers to smuggle the drugs from China and India. It could be a, a real health hazard. That's what worries local urologist Dr. Scott Baranoff. Whether it's counterfeit drugs or people using the Internet to buy the pills without a prescription, he says a person's safety is being compromised. He says that's why Nevada has cracked down. Physicians in the state of Nevada, if they um, prescribe drug without examining a patient, could lose their license. So websites presently uh, where... Um, patients can buy Viagra without an examination would be based outside of this state. Dr. Baranoff says Viagra is still a sensitive subject for men and that may be part of the reason there's such a demand on the black market. Now we mentioned the two arrests, Baron Isbell and David Rayner. Investigators say there are other suspects but a majority of them are fugitives living outside of the United States. Gary and Paula. What kind of demand is there for Viagra? Well those two brokers that are arrested were bragging that they could import two and a half million pills a month and we talked about Viagra is the most counterfeited drug in the world so two and a half millions of pills a month a lot of money yeah, that's a lot thanks Colleen very thanks. interesting McCarran Airport is bringing in some dogs to help with security the airport will get its first two canine teams on Monday dogs will be used to look for explosives in the airport area a third team of dogs will be at the airport by the end of the year coming up we'll tell you about a controversial study on breast self exams and we'll see a new way to find breast cancer early. Later in this hour, traffic tie-ups plague our commutes every day. Find out where the worst trouble spots are on Valley Roads. We'll have that story at 630. 
Hi, I'm News One's Deborah Levy with your Beyond the Neon event schedule brought to you by Las Vegas One. Dine to the sounds of bluegrass music as the Downtown Cultural Series presents the Marty Warburton Band. Friday, October 18th from noon to one at the Lloyd George Federal Courthouse. Refreshments will be served and admission is free. And the music continues as Rainbow Company Youth Theater holds open auditions for Snoopy the Musical. That will be held Saturday, October 19th at noon at the Reed Whipple Cultural Center. If you think you got what it takes, you can call 229-6553. And join the master of suspense during the spookiest time of the year as At the Cinema presents Halloween and Hitchcock, October 29th through the 31st at 7 at night at the Sammy Davis Junior Plaza. Wednesday evening on Face to Face. Confused about those other questions on your general election ballot? You know the lowdown on protecting marriage and decriminalizing pot. But are you perplexed by perpetuities? If so, you're not alone. What are the implications of all those statewide questions? We'll tell you. Plus, we'll add another name to the chicken list. Who else is afraid to go face to face? Find out Wednesday only on Las Vegas One. Under question nine, this is illegal. Marijuana use in all public places will be banned. Anyone who sells marijuana to children will go to prison. Under question nine, this is legal. Adults will be allowed to possess small amounts of marijuana in the privacy of their own homes. Cancer patients and other seriously ill people under the care of their doctors will have guaranteed legal access to medical marijuana in the privacy of a home or under the care of a doctor. Vote yes on question nine. I'm News One's Jeff Gillen with your community calendar of events sponsored by General Motors and Las Vegas One. Friends of the Las Vegas Charter School for the Deaf are asking you to open your wallet for a very good cause. The school is hosting a fundraiser Wednesday, October 2nd at Leatherby's Ice Cream on East Sahara. Another fundraiser will be held the following night at Villa Pizza on South Maryland Parkway. You can call 222-9699 for more information. And the Las Vegas Philharmonic kicks off its fourth season with an All-American Celebration Saturday, October 5th at 8 in the evening at the Artemis Ham Concert Hall at UNLV. The program will feature a host of American composers, including special guest artist Kevin Dias. Tickets for this premiere event begin at $20. You can call the UNLV Performing Arts box office at 895 Arts for more information. Tonight in Medical Breakthroughs, new research casts doubt on whether breast self-exams detect cancer early enough to save lives. The 10-year study involved 260,000 women in Shanghai, China. Half of them were taught how to do self-exams and half were not. Both groups had virtually identical death rates from the disease. American cancer experts say the bottom line is that women should not forego regular mammograms and doctor visits as the most effective defense. I think that it's much better to practice all three than just one. Certainly we wouldn't want to do breast self-examination to the exclusion of mammography. And I don't think we want to do just mammography and not do clinical breast examination and self-examination. Self so the three are important. The study also found that the Chinese women were not learning proper technique, perhaps, perhaps a factor of the large size of the group. They were much better off getting mammograms. Remember, it's what you don't know that can hurt you. Breast cancer is the most common form of cancer in women in the United States. Yet more than a third of women over 40 are not getting screened for the disease. If you are afraid to get tested, don't be. We see why in tonight's Channel 8 Medical Breakthroughs. Okay, ma'am. Come all the way in. Okay. Brenda Rozier okay, has had mammograms before. Come all the way Her in. thoughts? Cold. Hard. Painful. A mammogram is the okay? most common uh -huh. procedure used by doctors to find breast cancer. But it's not the only way. One new option is a procedure known as ductal lavage. You got used to it. Be just like having your annual pap smear. The procedure doesn't require any injection or needles. Patients say it only causes mild discomfort. Breast cancer starts in the cells that line the breast or milk duct. With a catheter, 
Doctors collect and test these potentially dangerous cells, locating the disease before a lump develops. Up to now, it's been not possible to um, sample the cells that, that cause breast cancer in the breast because they haven't been ex in accessible. Another screening option is a breast MRI. If there's an abnormality found, we're more likely to be able to assure that it's a cancer and the woman is less likely to have a biopsy that's unnecessary. The MRI provides clearer images of dense breast tissue, diagnoses implant rupture, and helps determine how far the cancer has spread. Susan Canavo took the test. It did find an abnormality, but it was a benign cyst. Very uh, relieved about that. That's good news no matter which test you take. Recent studies show breast screenings have reduced mastectomy rates. Doctors emphasize that mammography is the best tool for detection. If you cannot afford one, call the local Komen Foundation for help. And for a transcript of this report, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope and write detecting breast cancer on the front. There's also a wealth of information on our website. And that's Medical Breakthroughs, gentlemen. Very All good. right. Thank you. Some changes happened over the last couple of days. Have we, is <laughs> nice. more on the way? The bottom has dropped out of the thermometer, but uh, I think we're done as far as the drastic changes. And the next change will be going back up in the other direction. But, boy, it's nice out there. It's cool. It's damp. We've had some rain. Fortunately, the wind has backed off, too. Let me show you how the afternoon time-lapse photography looked from our camera on top of Boulder Station. Scarred by a few raindrops out there as well, but plenty of clouds racing north to south across the Las Vegas Valley sky. A few light showers as you look to the west. Had a nice sunset out there as well. And still a couple of showers on the east side of town, too. Here's real-time neighborhood weather. We'll begin up near Fort Apache and Ann Road. It's 53 degrees, a very light breeze, plenty of humidity, as you might expect. Near Wigwam and the Green Valley Parkway, it's also 53. They've had five hundredths of an inch of rain. Near Bonanza and Pecos, it's 55 degrees and just under a tenth of an inch of rain. And down in Searchlight, about a quarter of an inch of rain, 49 degrees already. And it's only 624 and some change. Meanwhile, other rainfall totals in neighborhoods across town. Southern end of the valley had about a tenth of an inch. Two tenths near Water Street in downtown Henderson, also near Flamingo and Boulder Highway. Not as much up in the northeastern part of the valley and not as much as you go westward. And while we did get a few sprinkles up in the northwest, it was not enough to be measured. Outside the valley, a dusting of snow on the mountain uh, melted down to one hundredth of an inch of rain. Prim and mesquite with up and over a third of an inch. Now those cool temperatures, and they were cool. Highs today in neighborhoods across town, anywhere from about 56, I think 63 was the warmest, and that was up here near Cheyenne Las Vegas Boulevard. It was 40 on the mountain, 59 at Red Rock, and Pahrump hit 62. At McCarran today, the top temperature was 58. 30 degrees below normal, 30 degrees. It's the coolest high temperature we've ever had on this date. It's the coolest high temperature ever over the first half of October since weather records have been kept here in Las Vegas. At McCarran also five hundredths of an inch of rain, bringing the yearly total to just under an inch. Normal would be three and a half. Air quality, rain, freshened and good. And here comes Lily, and there of course is the Louisiana coast. 145 mile per hour sustained winds now. It looks like it's going to make contact with central Louisiana about midday tomorrow. Certainly bears watching. This is really going to be bad news for those folks that were run over by Isidore last week. Close to the home on the Doppler radar imagery. Some showers moving down along the east side of town. Just a few sprinkles. We're not expecting anything heavy. We're on the back side of the system, and on an occasional basis, we'll get a few light showers uh, tonight, probably through the evening hours into the early morning hours before it dies down. The whole system will stagger on to the southeast, and we'll see the clearing line go through here probably not till about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And then this system up here will also race to the southeast. We'll get a few clouds. This time, I think the rain will stay in central Nevada, but we'll get some breezes as well as it comes calling, too. Tonight, 49 degrees with a few evening showers, then clearing very late tonight. A light and gentle northerly breeze, but it's damp out there, too, so there's some bite to the air. 75 tomorrow, lots of sunshine. Light tomorrow, you know, it's just call in tomorrow. It's going to be a great day. In fact, uh, keep it going through the weekend, too, with highs warming a little bit. We'll have some breezes come Saturday, maybe as early as Friday night. And once we get done with those clouds on Saturday, lots of sunshine and highs warm up in the low to mid 80s. So a little weather action the last couple of days with much needed rain. And hopefully we'll get a little more with the El Nino developing. We're hoping for a little wetter than normal winter. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. You probably get stuck in traffic tie-ups every day. Ahead, find out where the worst traffic is and what's being done to try to fix it. Some bumps in the road for Steve Wynn's dream for a new casino. We'll see what's up.
And I'm Chris Matthews. More baseball today as the playoffs heat up. Monday, the Twins tripped the A's. It was another story today. Sports is next here on Channel 8. Well, the San Francisco Giants open their postseason with a bang against the Braves. Hits for everybody. Eight San Francisco starters store, uh, scored a run. Two of those well, runs coming in the play. second off the bat of J.T. Snow. It's an RBI double. Later in the sixth, Benito Santiago with the double. Two more runs are going to trot home. Suddenly, it's 8-2 Giants. Same score in the eighth. Although Atlanta made things interesting with a pair of home runs. A solo shot by Gary Sheffield. And it's Javi Lopez with a two-run blast. 8-5 to five with the game time run now at the plate. Rob Nendo gets Sheffield to hit into the 6-4-3 double play. And the Giants win game one, 8-5. The A's know they let game one slip away Monday. Not about to leave any doubt today against the Twins. A's fans getting something to cheer about early when Eric Chavez takes Joe Mays deep. That's long and gone. A three-run home run, and who would have guessed that's all the A's would need. Although, they got lots more. Miguel Tejada knocks in a run. It's a double. The left center field, Mays and the Twins in trouble. A's put up real numbers today, winning nine to one to not the series at a game apiece. So game three now shifts to Minneapolis on Friday in New York. The Yankees and the Angels playing right now, and it is four nothing Angels in the third. Former Las Vegas 51's manager Jerry Royster make that was that was with the Stars actually. Jerry Royster was fired by the Brewers today. He's the sixth manager to be fired since the end of the season. Brewers had the worst record in the National League, losing 106 games this season. Hey, you wonder how much longer Pete Sampras is going to play competitive tennis. He's withdrawn from this year's remaining tourneys, which adds speculation to a possible retirement. He hasn't played since winning the U.S. Open last month when he beat Andre Agassi, who says he has no intentions of hanging it up. A couple weeks' time, I head over for the indoor season. I still have a shot at finishing number one in the world. and. That's important to me now. It's something that would be a big accomplishment at this stage of the ball game. So because I have a look at the basket, I'm going to go take a good shot at it. But next year, I'm going to come out ready, and I think I'll be better than, than I was this year. And to think it was only three years ago, he was ranked like 141 or something like what that. What a comeback. Unbelievable. Thanks, Thanks Chris. You bet. We have more news straight ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live at 630. See the worst spot for traffic tie-ups in the valley. And we'll show you what's being done to make it better for drivers. Plus, the latest on the dream for a new strip casino. Find out what's ahead for Steve Wynn's La Rev Resort. And later, the odd but informative public radio quiz show is coming to Las Vegas. Kate Maddox has the story in tonight's Eye on Entertainment. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6.30 with Paula Francis, Gary Waddell, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. You are looking at a live picture of US 95 at the Rainbow Curve, which is being dubbed by one study as the most congested road in the valley. Thanks for staying with us. Everyday Valley drivers try to find their way around the congestion. Transportation officials met today to talk about solutions to the congestion. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Yetta Gibson has more on some of the findings and solutions that came up in that meeting. Yetta. Paula, the study says the longer you wait in traffic, the more money you're losing. And getting to US 95 from Decatur appears to be the roughest and one of the most expensive commutes in the valley. Now, officials who compiled this study talked to valley transportation officials today about solutions. Chris Yepes loses hundreds of dollars every year because he travels down Rainbow from DI to US 95. A new traffic study says the time and gas people waste in traffic jams in this area cost them about $400 a year. This doesn't surprise Chris. A lot of bumper to bumper traffic, a lot of fender benders, a lot of people recklessly driving. The study was done by the Road Information Program, or TRIP. It says there are 15 routes in Las Vegas where traffic is so bad, commuters lose up to $988 each year in wasted time and gas. If nothing is done to fix the traffic problem, it will get worse because by 2010, travel is expected to increase by 64%. The study says the number one most congested route in the valley is from Summerlin Parkway to Main Street on US 95. 
Frank Moretti with TRIP says there needs to be more done than just road expansions to stop the problem before it gets worse and more expensive. It needs to make further improvements in its transit system to attract further people onto their transit systems, expand its, its bike paths and its sidewalks. We have found that these facilities do give an alternative for some of the shorter trips that people make in the community. Chris Jeppes has his own list of solutions. Wider lanes. What else? More stoplights. Valley transportation officials say in order to improve traffic, voters must support ballot question 10 this November. It asks to raise mainly sales tax so that traffic improvements can be made and your time and money can be better spent. Now again, Summerlin to Main Street on 95 appears to be the worst commute in the valley. Coming in second on that list, I-15 from Charleston to Spring Mountain. And coming in third, I-15 from Decatur to 95. Fourth, Rancho Road from Decatur to 95. And the fifth worst commute in Las Vegas, according to this study, is on Tropicana Avenue from Jones to Koval Lane. Now, according to this study, it says people lose anywhere from $500 to $988 each year year they travel these routes regularly so certainly there needs to be something done quick yetta gibson channel 8 eyewitness news live that's surprising thanks it yetta is. nevada's catholic bishops are expressing support for question two which would prohibit gay marriage but they have some reservations reno bishop philip strayling and las vegas bishop joseph pepe say they're concerned about issues like hospital visiting rights inheritance insurance and other gay rights that may be denied the leaders say despite that they support the measure because it's in line with the church's definition of marriage another valid question came under fire today from representatives of federal state and local law enforcement agencies question Regular nine would make the possession marijuana. of up to three ounces of marijuana legal here in nevada law enforcement officials say there's a link between drugs and criminal behavior sheriff jerry keller also spoke out against those who support the measure the sponsors of question nine call themselves nevadans for responsible law enforcement well let me tell you something they're not nevadans they're not responsible and they're not law enforcement we are law enforcement and our voices across the state resound collectively and together today to say no to question nine nevadans for responsible law enforcement say the measure will make it easier for seriously ill people to acquire the drug the candidates for lieutenant governor will face off in a debate tonight the debate between incumbent lorraine hunt and county commissioner aaron kenny starts at seven o'clock at the west sahara library District Attorney candidates David Roger and Mike Davidson will debate tomorrow, and you can watch that on our sister station, Las Vegas One, tomorrow evening at 8, with rebroadcasts at 2 a.m. on Friday and 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. One of Las Vegas' most successful hotel developers is doing something he's not used to, waiting. Gaming mogul Steve Wynn is waiting for the government to give final approval for a public stock offering that would provide some of the funding for his mega resort, La Rev. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Eric Levine joins us with more. Eric. Well, Paula, when Steve Wynn bought the desert, and he did so with hopes of building his own new one-of-a-kind resort, so far he's got the land to do it. He's got a business partner in Japanese company Aruze Corporation, and he's counting on a public stock offering and other loans to complete the project. But so far, his plans have not materialized. Steve Wynn was hoping to sign up stockholders for his $2.5 billion resort, La Rev, right after Labor Day. But so far, that hasn't happened. People in Wynn's office tell Channel 8 the Security and Exchange Commission has not given final approval for Wynn Resort's initial public offering. Uh, my sources uh, have told me that some of the delays uh, relate probably to the combination of his Macau Casino in the same uh, funding package with uh, Lareb. Uh, now, what those questions would be on the part of the SEC, I have no idea. Las Vegas-style editor Phil Hevener says Wynn's $355 million stock offering may be held up until questions involving his Macau China Casino are resolved. And Hevener thinks Wynn's track record is good enough to secure all the funding needed to complete this project despite a national economic slowdown. Every stock market Wall Street guru that uh, we speak with will tell you essentially the same thing in one or an way or another, that the conditions for what Steve Wynn proposes to do right now are far from the best, but that if anyone can do it, uh, he will. 
Of course, until the dirt starts moving, no one knows for sure. And we're hearing basically this. It's very hard to count Steve Wynn out. He's done so much here in Las Vegas with the Mirage, wished with Treasure Island and with the Bellagio. But with all the things going on with the economy and 9-11, some people say they won't be convinced until they see brown graking on brown graking on, on the property just behind me. Eric Levine, Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live. Thanks, Eric. A group of West Desert Inn homeowners are voicing concerns about plans to rezone parts of their neighborhood. The Clark County Commission is considering changing parts of Desert Inn from residential to commercial. The commercial, the, excuse me, the commission wants to give homeowners who are having trouble selling their homes another option. But some neighbors fear that a wave of commercial development could ruin the neighborhood. Their inclination is to allow some commercial, and we've been told that. So this ordinance would be a, a directive to control what can go commercial and what can't. And, and ideally, I think it should be as few as possible. A majority of homeowners support a limited commercial change known as an overlay district. County commissioners have postponed voting on this matter until after the November 5th elections. A popular radio program is coming to Las Vegas. Coming up on Channel 8 Eyewitness News, entertainment reporter Kate Maddox will have the scoop on the taping of the show, and the Las Vegas politician will be featured. And Kevin Janice will have the forecast as the remnants of last night's storm linger here in the back. not, there's a lot of funny stuff that happens in the news every day. On Saturday mornings, listeners to KNPR get a review of odd and interesting news items with the quiz show. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Kate Maddox is here with more. Kate. Hi. It's kind of hard to describe Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Uh -huh. It's like funny, but it's news, it's current events, so you have to check it out this yeah. week. The fans of talk radio programs and current events mixed with a healthy dose of comedy might appreciate a different kind of Las Vegas entertainment this week, and you don't have to wait to hear more. Ever listen to the week's hard news and find yourself wishing there was a show that poked a little fun at the talking heads, politicians, and celebrities? We're more about treating the week's news the way that we feel it should be treated, with derision and contempt. Peter Sagal is the host of National Public Radio's wildly popular current events quiz program, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which is based in Chicago. But on Thursday, Wait, Wait will have a rare live taping at Samstown. Well, ostensibly, it's a quiz about the week's news. And so, you know, if, you, if you're a news junkie, like I am, uh, and you pay a lot of attention to the week's news, you can tune into our show and feel smart uh, and smug somewhat. Well, a lot, because it's public radio, and that's really actually one of the favorite hobbies of people who listen to public radio, feeling smug. Panelists help Sagal answer the week's amusing questions, along with veteran broadcaster Carl Castle. And for the special Vegas appearance, our very own mayor, Oscar Goodman, will be there to help with the segment. We understand he's a little shy, we're going to work pretty hard to draw him out of his shell. You know, I think we have one plan. We're going to offer him a third of the take of the ticket. We think that might, you know. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Las Vegas edition will be broadcast on KNPR 89.5 FM this Saturday from 11 to noon. He was kidding about Oscar, by the way. But for more information about Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, Tell Me's Las Vegas show, log on to knpr.org or call 888-464-2468 for tickets that are still available. How often does Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me go on the road? It's, he said in the five years that they've been on the air, about five or six times a year. So it's really oh. special that they're coming here. Yeah. It's a different thing. That's it's fun. Great. Very nice. Thanks, Kate. Thanks. Right. Fun interview. <laughs> Kevin Jennison is here with the weather. Is it going to rain again tonight? Paula, we've got a few showers over the east side of the valley. I don't think we'll see anything significant, but we will get a few more spits of drizzle and maybe some light rain showers just enough to wet the ground a little more. Near eastern of the St. Rose Parkway, south end of the valley, they're at 55 degrees. Up near Cary and Hollywood, where they had a tenth of an inch of rain, it is 56. Next stop will be down in Boulder City, where it's 49 degrees. They've also had a tenth of an inch of rain. And down in Sandy Valley, it's 52 degrees. A little breeze, but not much. Not nearly what we saw yesterday. And six hundredths of an inch of rain. Look at these cool temperatures. It's cool. It's damp. It's very undesert-like. But it's a nice change. They range anywhere from about 52 to 57. And outside the valley, the mountain hovering just barely above freezing. Death Valley, whoop, they've just dipped to 72 degrees. And down in Laughlin, it is 57 let me show you the latest with Lily. The hurricane continues to move toward the Louisiana coastline, moving at a pretty good clip, about 16 miles per hour. The intensity of the winds, 145 
miles per hour, and most likely it will be that strong when it makes contact with the Louisiana Gulf Coast. We're thinking now about midday tomorrow, maybe early morning our time. We do have this front right here that's activating these thunderstorms, so what will happen is once Louie moves inland from Louisiana, it will kind of hook to the right as everything pushes it off toward the middle Atlantic states. By that time, It'll still be breezy, uh, but uh, just heavy rain remaining, too. Speaking of rain, not certainly anything we're near the impact, but some light showers. Darker areas of green would be rain actually hitting Sunrise Mountain right now, and those showers will slide slowly south across the eastern part of the valley. We've got a few more showers to go through on the back side of this system. Then our next focus will be up here as this moisture will come on down. Right now, it looks like that'll just rain in central parts of Nevada, but... We'll get some clouds and we'll get some more wind. Of course, not quite as strong as what we saw yesterday, but more breeze on the way. 49 degrees for the low temperature tonight. Skies will clear off late after a few more dampenings. Then tomorrow, expect a high temperature of 75. Lots of sunshine and a light breeze. Should be a great day tomorrow. Here's a look ahead now at your seven-day forecast. Look for those temperatures to warm up to about 80 over the weekend. A few clouds Friday and Saturday. Most of the cloudiness will come through late Friday. And if we're going to get a sprinkle, that's when it'll happen. Otherwise, breezy. And once we get done with Saturday, you know, that's some pretty. I'm, I'm just admiring these numbers. 82s, 85s. If we bottle this and open it back up next to July, we will truly be living large. <laughs> Thanks, right. Kevin. Okay. Chris Matthews is here now. We're playing baseball everywhere, so you're talking boxing. Got boxing. Love <laughs> De La Hoya news. is always big, isn't it? Here we go. What a difference the Golden Touch can make. While Fernando Vargas will be fighting in the commissioner's court, Oscar De La Hoya being honored in this Los Angeles courtroom. Plus, honors could be forthcoming for a Lady Rebel. Sports is next here on Channel 8. Well, the Rebels have a huge game ahead. The battle for the Fremont Cannon explodes onto the scene this Saturday. It's a must-win game for the Rebels, who haven't lost to the Wolfpack now in two years. There's no need to try to hype this game. The players already know what's at stake. Game against Reno. It's our rival, and we're really pumped up about this game. It's always going to be a fun game playing against Reno. I mean, they, they came off a big win against BYU, so, I mean, obviously they're, they're a good team. So we're going to be ready for that game, definitely. Good for us to get a, get rest and kind of refocus after a tough loss that we had and just kind of, you know, get our wits about ourselves and hopefully get ready for Reno this next week. All right, more than 27,000 expected for Saturday's showdown. No local TV, so you have to join us at Sam Boyd if you want to see this one. Well, less than two weeks after his knockout performance in Las Vegas, Oscar De La Hoya honored by Los Angeles Mayor Gerald Hahn. Tuesday will be De La Hoya Day in Los Angeles. And uh, we will begin. Uh... The message that I try to send out is um, to all the kids who, who listen to me, to all the kids uh, when I go to schools and, and speak to them, to tell them that there is hope, that there is, um, when you work hard, when you, uh, when you dedicate yourself to something, uh, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. And boy, has he achieved quite a bit. Lady Rebels polishing up their dance shoes. They expect and are working toward another invite into the NCAA tournament. Last year's taste only whet the appetite. That celebration was in March. UNLV got the NCAA invite. For the first time in years, the Lady Rebels returned to the big show. Now they want to direct a sequel to get back. So last year, we kind of set the tone going to the NCAA, and that will be our goal this year. So the fans will kind of see us try to reach for our goals to be higher. Yeah, we were pretty guard heavy this year, and that's a good thing, you know, because the team's going to have a hard time keeping up with us. So we're going to really focus on that, really pushing the ball out, running fast breaks. So. If the Lady Rebels are to return to the tourney, they'll ride the shoulders of Constance Jinx. The word Constance, translated in Rebel language, is carry the load. Well, she always has to carry the load, but hopefully I can help her, you know, take some of the load off of Constance. She is going to carry the load this year. Yeah, she's used to that. You know, we're going to try to help her out as much, but, you know, she's one of our go-to players, and she's ready for it. She's always ready for that. Probably in the beginning, I might have to carry the load, but as time games roll around and the season progresses, I think, you know, people learn that, you know, it just can't be me. It's been a while since the ladies enjoyed this party. It's a party they can't wait to crash. When do you wish practice and the season started? Today. <laughs> <laughs> See, not even know with football yet, and they want to go right That's now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they're, left, they're fun to watch. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. You bet. When Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 630 continues, a new idea for something to do while you're waiting in traffic.
Coming up on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 11 o'clock tonight, part of Las Vegas's colorful history is in serious financial trouble. Tonight, hear what made Binion's Horseshoe a local landmark and why its current problems could put the downtown economy in danger. Plus, victims of violence take back the night in honor of lost loved ones. Those stories and more tonight at 11. A couple in Washington, D.C. is enjoying their new son who just couldn't wait to come into the world. In addition to coming three weeks early, the little Joshua decided not to wait for the hospital either this morning when the couple found they couldn't make it to Innova Alexandria Hospital. In the midst of a busy highway, a 911 dispatcher helped them through the delivery. Rescue workers arrived shortly after, and mother and child are doing fine. That's good. That's it for Eyewitness News at 6. Entertainment Tonight is coming up next. Join us again for Eyewitness News live at 11.